Hey guys, it's me Pratima and today I'll be talking about the new Realme 10. If you remember, last year's Realme 9 was a good budget entry-level mid-range phone. I was really fond of its aesthetics, its display, camera and even battery life. The only downside it had was its average performance but with this phone, they have improved that aspect as well. It starts at 14,000 rupees in India and for that price, I think the Realme 10 is an excellent all-round budget phone. If you compare it with the last gen Realme 9, it might feel like a boring successor but if you think about it, this don't fix if it's not broken approach is actually what makes this stand out in the market. Here, the first thing I really like about the Realme 10 is its performance for the price. It features the Helio G99 4G chipset and compared to the Snapdragon 680, this is a very good upgrade in terms of day-to-day -day usage as well as gaming. In uh, PUBG Mobile, for example, even with smooth graphics and ultra frame rates, the Realme 9 was limited to just 30 FPS. However, the Realme 10 now supports 40 FPS at higher balance graphics. It also supports 60 FPS gameplay on Call of Duty Mobile in multiplayer mode and um, high FPS games like Mech Arena can now give around 80 FPS on average with graphics set to high. However, since this is a budget chipset, while playing higher end games like Genshin Impact, the phone struggles even at the lowest graphic settings resulting in frequent jitters and lags. But if you're not a gamer, this phone does quite well during everyday chores. Even multitasking with a few light to medium apps is not a problem here, but just don't expect to glide smoothly through 18 different apps as implied by the company. I uh, tried multitasking with around 10 apps and a lot of them needed refreshing even with the extended 8GB RAM enabled. Anyway, Realme's software complements the Helio G99 really well and uh, navigating through the system UI and apps is fluid thanks to the 90Hz refresh rate. But we know that Realme's UI is not the best when it comes to things like bloatware, so if you're looking for a cleaner experience, I would advise you to uninstall or disable those unwanted apps as soon as you boot the phone. Also, I'm a little disappointed to see that the phone comes with Android 12 and not 13 out of the box. But according to Realme officials, they are rolling out Android 13 on this phone very soon. Realme also promises TUV SUD certified 36 months fluency experience here. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this certification shows that smartphones will work smoothly even after 36 months of use. Now, I have only tested this phone for about a month, so I guess it's too early for me to judge that. But if I'm able to test that in the future, I will make sure to leave an updated comment below. Moving on, the display on the Realme 10 is uh, pretty much the same as last year. You get a 6.4 inches Super AMOLED panel with overall vibrant colors, stunning contrast and wide viewing angles here. There's even Wide One L1 certification, so you can binge watch your uh, favorite shows on Netflix or Amazon Prime in HD resolution. Realme says it has a peak brightness of 1000 nits, but under normal usage, I found the brightness levels to be pretty average for an OLED screen, and uh, that's noticeable, especially while using the phone outdoors. The speaker here is just okay-ish as well. It uses a downward firing speaker that can get very loud with the new 200% ultra volume mode, but with just a single speaker, you definitely miss a stereo effect. Regardless, I like the design of the Realme 10. It has a modern look to it and the overall design is quite handy and lightweight. And um, although it is an all-plastic build, you will not notice any creaks or bends when applying pressure to it. The flat frames offer a secure grip too, and we get a fingerprint sensor here in the power button which is quite fast and reliable. If you remember, the Realme 9 had an in-display fingerprint sensor, so this surely is a cost-driven measure, but I'm not complaining. Likewise, there's a slight downgrade in the camera department. Realme has gotten rid of the ultra-wide-angle lens and the phone only has a 50-megapixel primary camera along with a 2-megapixel depth sensor. 
Even the 50 megapixel primary camera is a massive change from last year's 108 megapixel shooter, which means the sensor size has drastically reduced this time. As a result, the Realme 10 resorts to artificial sharpening to make the photos look detailed. There are times the phone goes overboard with it and you get overprocessed photos like this one. But mostly during good lighting conditions, you can also get some decent shots from the Realme 10. Um, I personally like the close-up shots that I took with this phone. However, the phone suffers significantly under low light. As you can see, the normal nighttime images are blurry and full of noise. Switching to the dedicated night mode fixes these issues to an extent, but the details are still lacking. The portraits, on the other hand, are pleasant to the eyes, although you can notice imperfect edge detection on some shots. The subject also looks a bit pale sometimes, but generally you will get good results. The selfies from the 16 megapixel front camera also have similar properties. The skin tone looks a bit washed out, but the overall output is not bad per se. They're okay. As for videos, you can record up to 1080p 60fps videos with the Realme 10, but since it lacks any kind of stabilization, the output is nothing remarkable. Lastly, talking about the battery life, the Realme 10 packs a decent 5000mAh battery that can easily get you through a day. And if you're not a heavy user, you can even extend it to two days. Likewise, it comes with 33 watt fast charger inside the box that can take the phone from 0 to 100% in just 75 minutes. Okay, to conclude, if you look at the competition like the new Redmi Note 12 or the Galaxy A14, they all have gone big on the 5G hype which has shot the price up. So if you really don't care about 5G, the Realme 10 is the way to go. It has a fast and stable performance, it has a good OLED display, a long-lasting battery life, and I love its design too. It does have its shortcomings like its cameras, but overall the Realme 10 offers an excellent all-round experience for a starting price of just 14,000 rupees or 13,000 rupees if you consider the bank discount. So everyone, that was all for my full review of the all-new Realme 10. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon. Till then, I'm Pratima Adhikari and thank you so much for watching.